you see, I got mad for a second. You were talking. <laughs> but when I was uh, when I got to the point and I was able to employ family members, man, it's because for one, I told them what the idea was, and then two, I figured out what they skill sets was and how we can work together. So my sister handles the back end of the business of customer experience and the shipping. My younger brother runs the social media. I do the marketing and the sales and also partner up with Blue Pill on the same business. So the goal at the end of the day, when we talk about unity, when we talk about building structures, we have to first look at three to five people around us. And we have to figure out how we can actually build with them to come together for a common cause. I was in the airport the other day and the brother said that he watched one of my videos and he uh, uh, recruited 10 of his friends and gave them $200 so that they can start a record company. Right? He said before that shit, I was selling drugs. You know what I'm saying? So when we look around in these rooms, we always trying to figure out these big ideas that we can do by ourselves. And that's why we left doing it by ourselves. So the goal should be first to look at our family and figure out how can we create family LLCs. Right? Because then everything you all do can become a tax write-off. You understand me? That wasn't just a family dinner. That was a business meeting. So we have to think a little different on how we design our lives and how we go forward, even how we think of entrepreneurship. We have to be able to share access and skills with each other. Because oftentimes, we don't mind going slaving for somebody else, but when our brother want to hire us, we look down at that. But why we don't work for each other, even on our off time? That's the goal. That's how we become masters of ourselves and each other. So this is my business partner. I love having him a white envelope. You know what I'm talking about? It feel good. I'll be hard tugging it a little bit sometimes. When it get a little thick. You know what I'm saying? But I let it go. <laughs> so, how many in here work with one of their family members? Everybody in the room, hands should be raised. You mean you don't build with your family? How is that family if y'all not building nothing together? There's a lot of people in relationships with people that they're not building with. You got a woman and she working for somebody else. You building your business and paying the bills. So she not only is working for another man, but then she's taking all her money and spending with another man. Then you take care of her. Y'all not coming together and building anything and collaborating. Two entities come together to create a third. So the goal should be y'all working side by side and going upward. Not y'all have to, all your energy is going outward. At the end of the day, y'all trying to figure out how y'all can come back together. That's not what a relationship, that's not what marriage, that's not what none of this stuff was even started for. It's taught off of business, building nations and structures and empires. But we've lost so much of our nature and we've listened to so many outside entities tell us what should be. The fundamental thing that we've lost is family. Family. Dr. Elijah Muhammad had created a family bazaar day. And they called it bizarre because it was so bizarre to see families come together. Black families. So not only they had the family, they set it up where it was vending all around. So now you actually making money and things of that nature. A lot of people family have hustles. The difference between a hustle and business is the business is legitimate. So when we see our brothers and sisters with skills and talents and things of that nature, we have to be able to help them build their dream on solid foundations. If my brother is building something, I say, well, wait a minute, let me do the marketing for that. Right? My sister said, no, I hate shipping. So she, you know what I mean? So she said, let me take care of the shipping and curate a great customer experience. One of the main things that entrepreneurs today, especially in black community, is missing is the customer experience because that's the part of the business that we fail at, but that's the most important today. The hospitality model, constantly checking up on your customer because everybody's entrepreneurs right now. So if you got a business, you got a business, and they're the same business, who do I go to? The one I had the best experience with. So you have to build business models based off empathy, understanding how other people feel. That keeps them, the marketing keeps them, that gets them there, but the branding, that keeps them coming back. It's a difference between a customer and a client, right? You can have a customer, that's a transaction, but a client, they coming back, that's a relationship. So if a person spends $100 with me, they don't cost $100 to, uh, to, uh, advertise on a platform now, which y'all think that when you did it. But if they charged $100 and, 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 and they spent that with me and say, man, can you post this on your page? I'm like, okay, cool, I'll post it on my page. And let's say they got 10 customers from that, right? And they got a shirt that costs $10, they would be like, oh man, I only got $100 off of that, man. That's not how you're supposed to think. If you're getting customers, you got $100. But 
if you're building a customer experience, you can times tens that to twelve hundred or, or, or yeah, twelve hundred dollars because you go get them coming back recurring, 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 recurring. And then at the same time, we try to figure out models right to where we can sell everything that we know. You know, you can sell what you know. There's people that's teaching classes on how to do them. That was a soft skill that they had that they didn't even think about. But in the sharing economy, right, you can go right there on one of those sites and you can upload something that you know and then somebody else will pay for it because people are always trying to figure out stuff to do with their time on the Internet. So as we utilize in these phones, we have to start thinking with this creative capacity. In 1995, what happened? Y'all from D.C., y'all got to know this. Yeah, man, not Washington. You got to say it right. The million man march. Washington march didn't sound like a white man threw it or something. You know what I'm saying? It was the million man march. You know what I'm saying? In 1995. Now, there was something else that happened at that time. Netscape. It was the first IPO of the internet. Boom. Now, you have to understand that you have, your mind has to always be currently updated to all the opportunities that's around you. That's when social media was created. But we have so many problems that we're trying to make atonement for that we didn't even have the opportunity to pull energy onto the dream and the opportunities we could have utilized today that would have made our parents billionaires they've gotten to the dot-com era. Right now, like the brother teaching you about him, there's other industries that represent that same thing that the internet represents. But we're not updating our minds because we're spending so much energy on distractions that we don't have time to focus. You know who the most popping rappers is right now. You know it's Megan Thee Stallion in the Bay. You knew that. I had to tell you. But you don't know what technology is popping right now. Right? You don't know what Congress is doing with blockchain. Right? You don't know 20 streams of income that you can name me that you can just start making passively off some apps. But you go complain about bill money. Come on now. We got to update our mind. We have to understand what's the internet of today that I'm missing out on. What new technology that can make what I'm doing more effective? I don't want to work 40 hours a week. I want to squeeze that into four hours. But there's technology that constantly updates and we can constantly make ourselves more effective. But if we stay in this mindset to where our energy is in our distractions, we never get to our attractions. And it pulls us off track so we can't continue to pull our actions into, in, in, into reality. So I want everybody down here, I want you all to Create a plan and a goal. For one, I want you to create an LLC with your family and figure out, for one, how y'all can create a family bank, right? I want y'all to figure out how you can create a business plan with your family. And for one, you can't work with everybody. Work with who's ready, right? When you work with who's ready, then everybody else comes because they want to be a part, right? You get one or two people already because nobody wants to be first and nobody wants to be last, which is why people market social proof on the Internet, it's like, look, somebody already a part of it. So you figure out that one person in your family, right, that you can work with, and then y'all start that business structure. And once y'all got a good foundational relationship, only then you can bring somebody in, but you have to make sure it's under structure and under organization. Sometimes I have to stop and yell at my younger brother, but then once I do that, his effectiveness goes through the roof. One thing that I had to figure out when I quit my job or fired my job is how to manage myself. Because one of the hardest things on the planet is learning how to manage yourself. So I had to learn how to manage my time and all my energy because when I was working a job, somebody told me when my, the output of my energy wasn't going into real business effectiveness. They said, no, I need you to go do this. I need you to go do this now. So for you, you have to even know when to take breaks so that you can be at optimal performance. It ain't about working 12 hours a day. No, it's about working as many effective hours where you perform it optimally a day. So learning how to manage yourself in business term and uh, business management is when you administer your activities to get to set obligation and goals. Excuse me, can I get everybody quiet down in the back? Appreciate y'all. I don't really like people talking though. And you can get their attention. We are, we are almost coming to a close. So I want this to be very important. Yeah, shut them doors for me, man. We, we don't, appreciate we don't, your existence. We, you know, it took all, this is the, the last shifting event of 
you know, the year and the only shift the event of the year. You know how hard it was to get everybody to come together. Y'all think unity is easy, but it has to be a lot of due diligence and intentionality that goes into it. I just had to buy these chairs right before and we had to organize with a brother that I never met over the phone. I had to go fly out and grab my brother so he can film this. You know what I mean? And all this comes out of pocket. I'm going to lose money at the end of the day, but I get paid by helping the people and adding to the legacy. That's what it's about. It, it, I love you, bro. I appreciate it. Yes, no, no. These brothers bought their own plane tickets and flew out here. Brother get paid ten thousand dollars a speech or something. No, no clock yet. Now let everybody get, get the rest here. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing, red pill and blue pill. They just flew out to the UK. You understand me? A Messi get paid corporate videos. I mean, corporate accounts. That man is an accountant in real life. He get paid a lot of money. You understand? Same thing with Ben X and all my brothers. So. It's gratefulness for 